and we're back. Dynamic effort bench day today, and it still is going to be kind of DE intent, but I'm almost wondering if I should start calling this something else because in a way today it's going to be me grasping at straws to try to better figure out how to make this whole pec shoulder situation work better. And like the pec shoulder situation, it is insanely frustrating right now because with the stage of rehab I'm at, it feels so freaking good everywhere except for bench pressing. But what I gotta remember right now is like with coming back from something this big and with the pace that I'm pushing, like I am doing things that should not be possible right now. Like I benched 405 six months after having my pack completely ripped off and reattached. Like I gotta remember that, that is freaking sick. And I gotta remember that coming back from an injury, it should be hard it should be frustrating it should be a challenge and the fact that it is hard the fact that it is frustrating the fact that it is a challenge is why there are so many lifters who just get stuck and then just give up and quit and they let something like this be a career ender and i gotta remember that if this is not going to be a career ender which it will absolutely not be i need to just keep chugging along keep figuring out and keep adapting as i go and today is going to be a reflection of me adapting to try to better figure this sucker out because what we're going to be running is the american cambridge bar in the reverse grip setting now the reason i'm running this sucker is Number one, the reverse grip is gonna force me to really pack in and create that depression that I've been struggling with on bench. Number two, the camber on the sacrum means I'm gonna be getting a little bit more range of motion, which will make it a little bit harder on that shoulder as well. And if I can handle this guy well, I should be able to handle the real bench bar better. So let's get into it. This thing feels horrendous in the exact way that I wanted it to feel horrendous. So hopefully she's a good call. All right, work sets, no idea how many sets I'm gonna run, but the plan is to just do sets of five, relatively short rest, until I feel like all the shit that I want to work is working the way that I want it to be working. And what's sick about the reverse grip is because I'm someone who creates a lot of tension by torquing into the bar, since my hands are like over here, it's so much harder to torque. So I have to really make sure that I'm creating tension with that depression. And I think that is gonna be why this bar is going to help me so much. I think I'm gonna try the wider grip setting on the next couple. Wider is way gnarlier. <laughs> Gotta stick with it. Yeah, that is freaking feeling good. Gonna run one more, make it an even 10. And to test whether or not that whole upper back torque depression theory is going to work with this bar, what we're running next is shoulder saver pad. And considering how much this thing screwed me on Friday, all I really want to do today is see if I can feel like I'm in more control stopping the bar through that mid range. Okay, warm up with one red, see how she feels. Oh, I can already tell. Lots of fucking firing. Elbow good? Yep. Holy shit, I'm cured. What? No freaking way. That was all you needed. <laughs> Should have got that bar out months ago. Wow. Okay, that felt really freaking good. So 
straight to two reds. Hopefully this doesn't bite me in the ass. It's not gonna bite me in the ass, right? Oh yeah, tight. I'm home. There you go. Yeah, we are freaking in business. Made the mistake of opening up my phone and seeing that I got a YouTube comment notification on the last AMA video of someone or from someone who clearly did not listen to what I said in the video and like that shit like it used to piss me off because like stupid people leaving stupid comments just for the sake of showing people how stupid they are but you know what you do when that happens there's a delete button you just delete it and it goes away anyways 285 on the bar not gonna go too crazy because this is supposed to be a light day and we don't need to go too crazy on a light day even if it does feel really freaking good keeping some in the pocket so we can move up in the next couple weeks. <laughs> Oops. These hooks are so long. Okay, we do. I was like, wow, that feels good. And then it's like, oh, no, that there's the hook. The lighting here is going to suck, but just so you guys can see what I'm talking about, with these sandwich hooks, they're really freaking nice, but the disadvantage is like how chonky this is, and I'm someone that likes to set up like as far under the bar as I can so I can have as short a pullout as possible, but if I do that on these and try to have as short a pullout as possible, because this is like an inch long, I end up being like an inch closer to the edge of the hooks that I'm used to, and then I can sometimes accidentally clip the hooks. Okay, last set. Yeah, that is freaking sweet after Friday. And we're going higher J hooks this week, but less band tension with the Elite FTS average bands, which should be a little more wiggly wobbly, which means hopefully I don't roll my wrist and eat shit from this height because if I fall from this height, it's gonna hurt a little bit more, but we're actually not sagging that low, so we'll see. can definitely tell that's harder to control with this band versus the strong, which again, with what I'm dealing with, that is probably a very good thing for me. These are so sick. If there's like one push-up variation that I absolutely love, I mean, I love all push-ups, but oh, this is beautiful. <sighs> so nice. So freaking nice. Am I in frame at the bottom still? If I'm not in frame at the bottom, I apologize. Mostly, Mostly okay. Mostly is good enough for this set. pointed the camera down so hopefully better framing 
had hardly any rest in this set, so I might end up falling flat on my face, but still try to get some decent reps in. Yeah, we'll be okay for a couple. And back to the kettlebell tricepticals. Gonna run lighter, get a little bit more range, a little bit more roll on these suckers than the last time I ran them for a little bit more stretch through the shoulder. And like, I know this is pathetic, but this is the shoulder range I'm working with right now. So cut me some slack. And someone was commenting, asking about how I seem to rotate through accessories like on almost a weekly basis with some movements and like a lot of that is like the movements that i'm rotating through quickly they're often ones where i either don't think it matters what i do as long as i'm working hard enough to drive progress on the main lifts or the reason I'm rotating through quickly is because I'm learning something about the main lift and then I want to be able to target that quickly by changing exercise selection. So like in the case of triceps, like I have like my big move or my rolling dumbbells that I want to keep in. I want to keep pushing hard because I think that's what is driving a lot of the arm strength that is helping make up for the shoulder on bench. But as far as like the other tricep stuff I do, I don't think it matters all that much as long as I'm digging in and working the triceps hard, it's gonna work. So let's dig in and work them hard. <sighs> yeah. All right, round two. And on the note that I was talking about with the last set, because my secondary today was harder on my triceps than in previous weeks. I think I'm only gonna run these for triceps today just to make sure that they aren't too cooked for my Friday session. Because with Friday being max effort, like in a way I don't wanna be sacrificing training to show better on max effort, but with how triceps have been feeling on max effort day, They've been feeling a little bit sore, a little bit cooked. I want to just make sure that they don't actually turn into super duper ultra burnt steak cooked crunchy stuff for Friday. <sighs> like we're still getting good work in there, so I ain't slacking. <sighs> oh. And lefty is struggling with that rollback. But you know what? That's probably a good thing that I'm doing them with a little bit more roll than previous rounds of these. And like, set two feels a lot better than set one. And as the reps go on, it's getting better and better as we go until the tricep totally starts burning out, which it's getting there. And gonna go middle handle on the multi-grip today. Not gonna do the mechanical drop, just gonna get to decently hard sets in really try to get good connection good pull good squeeze good stretch good scap set oh 
Oh yeah. <sighs> Neutral grip pull down just friggin' hits. They are so sick. Hold up a little for the next one. All right, let's crank. Feeling like a seated kettlebell front raise with uh, something else seated, supersetted. Don't want to give the spoiler before I get there, but I don't know. Let's try to have some fun with the delt accessories. Because again, I don't think this is something that matters too much what exactly I'm doing right now. As long as I'm doing something where I'm able to push relatively hard. And I'm really stoked that the front delts have come round enough that I actually handle the 44 pound kettlebell on these. Cause if you remember a couple weeks ago, that was not happening, but the intuitive among you may have guessed Seated dumbbell cleans. These are so freaking gross. <laughs> Delts just exploded. Wow. And like, if it isn't evident by my shoulder and arm development, this little stuff that I do at the end of the session, like I don't love training delts. I don't love training biceps, but if I can have some fun with my exercise selection, it kind of gives me extra reason to dig in and actually train delts hard, actually train biceps hard and like, if I don't want child-sized shoulders and arms, I'm gonna have to train them hard. And like, if I can do different stuff every week, get a different feel every week, get something fun every week, I think that is worth allowing myself a little flexibility when it comes to exercise selection here. <clears throat> Man, oh man. Okay, more of these. Dig it in. And I don't know how visually apparent it is in the video, but when I'm running those seated dumbbell cleans, one of the most important things is that when I'm flipping the dumbbells around, I'm doing it by pulling my shoulder blades down my back and creating that scap depression to initiate that flip. And if we're initiating that flip with scap depression, like this is getting your scap set on a squat bar and it's gonna carry over huge to being locked in underneath a big squat. And over in Niana's side of the basement for some preachers in the GHR. <laughs> Get it? Because laundry's over here. The only reason 
I wanted to do these today is because I thought of that line and I'm like, this will test if Miana's actually watching the vlog or not because if she isn't watching the vlog, there will not be a sassy comment about the laundry. If she is watching the vlog, there will be a sassy comment about the laundry. So be on the lookout for that. But I don't know, it's been a while since I ran a preacher and these just feel good. And the kettlebell's over here. I got no fancy reason for curling the kettlebell other than the kettlebell was right here next to the GHR and I didn't want to walk over to grab the dumbbells. So we're working with it. Getting a big old pump, big old squeeze. Oh yeah, that's that's about RP range. Yeah. Okay. Other side. But in all seriousness, I am very grateful that Miana does the laundry because Miana doing the laundry allows me to have time to film and edit these videos. So everybody spam the comments with thank you, Miana, for doing Seth's laundry for him. I also think like I'm probably incapable of doing laundry. Like I, I don't know how to do it. I'll probably mess something up. I'll probably ruin all of my clothes, especially like the Lulu pants. Like I'm sure you got to do something fancy with Lulu pants to make sure that they don't like shrink or turn purple in a washing machine. So very, very, very grateful that I have her clothing, cleaning support. <sighs> She's going to be really pissed now at this point. Even though I swear like that was actually nice, not sarcastic. But she'll still get sassy. <laughs> she's so cute when she's angry. All right. Minimal rest. Right back into round two of these suckers. And like, it is lighter than what I've been doing with the dumbbell curls. But it's also a lot more strict curl, which in a way makes up for the overall lightness of it and it just feels really freaking good to get that nice big elbow lengthening bicep lengthening i'm not really lengthening my elbow elbow opening at the bottom and i'm just trying to get a really nice big squeeze on the way up yeah these are good these are cooking them whoo is a pop. <sighs> okay. Righty. Yeah, these are nice. Good choice, Seth. <sighs> man, oh freaking man. And now that we're inside of seven weeks out, gonna start pulling back on biceps volume a little bit. And it's not like biceps are the most fatiguing thing, but they're definitely not gonna drive the total. And as the beat gets closer and closer, I'm gonna start trimming back on the less important accessories just a little bit so that I can work harder and put more load into the main work and into the things that really are going to be driving the total. But with that, onto the spread eagles. And similar to what I did with the declines last week, in the name of periodizational loading, gonna go a little lighter and push a little bit deeper into the old rep ranges here. So let's get her. Oh, yeah.
And like, with how strong those felt, I probably didn't need to pull back today, but with everything, you can only push hard for so many weeks in a row. And if you're doing something like this, where I'm just running the same movement over and over and over again, because I know this movement drives things well, it's better to pull back by choice than be forced to pull back down the road. And like this pullback today should let me have a good stretch of pushing them harder into the meat before I do inevitably pull back again a little bit at the final stages of peaking. All right, round two. And I know that one light bench day going well isn't really all that indicative that this is getting more figured out, but with how good those reverse grip camber bar press thingies felt, with how good the shoulder saver felt, with how connected upper back felt today, I'm at least optimistic that things are moving in the right direction. Like what I did today is going to help things move in the right direction. And obviously I won't really know that until Friday. I probably won't really know that for a few more Fridays from now, but it's like, frick, if I benched 405 with how shitty things have felt these last couple of weeks since pushing the loading up, like if I can do 405 feeling like that, I know that come meet day, we will be in a very good spot. And like kind of mathing things out in my head right now, like I'm thinking all I really need to have a pretty sweet total is like a 418 bench, like anything more than 418 and I'm gonna be set up to do something pretty darn cool. So that's name of the game from here on out. Just keep setting myself up to do something cool. Keep working with what the shoulder's given me because Obviously, I can try to make things happen, but I also understand that coming back from something this big, it will take time. And whether or not that time agrees with my schedule, it's yet to be determined. But right now, I'm at least hopeful that we're going to have something pretty cool to put on the bar come meet day. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for tagging along. Thank you for hitting that like button, subscribe button, and everybody that's commenting. Appreciate the hell out of Alia. Have a good rest of your night.